What is good, everybody? Welcome back to another My Name Toys video. Today, we are back with a brand new WWE show review. And today, we are covering WWE Night of Champions 2023. Yes, the new World Heavyweight Championship has been revealed to us. I have an actual one in the works right now. But for now, we're going to use the old big gold. I never really discussed my thoughts on the championship here on the channel, which I guess we can get into when we dive into that matchup itself. But today, we are covering WWE Night of Champions 2023. Roman Reigns not defending his championships tonight. We are getting a brand new contest. Consolation prize. Though deemed as a consolation prize, we do have AJ Styles and Seth Rollins squaring off to crown a new champion tonight, and I'm excited for the matchup itself. Even if I'm not a big fan of the championship, you know what those things entail. Again, we're going to dive into that as we get into the matchup, but what we're going to do is run through the entire Night of Champions card, breaking down all of the action, letting you guys know my thoughts on every single matchup personally, letting you guys know where I stand on all the matchups, where we're headed from here, what I thought of the show in general, any cool gears, all that stuff will be broken down in this video. So let's shut the hell up and dive into Night of Champions 2023, live from Saudi Arabia. So being the consolation prize that it is, it did not get to main event the show. Again, those, those are just jokes, all right? But being the creation of this championship, it's obvious that they didn't want to give one of these two guys the, the option of dethroning Roman Reigns, and I really don't know how I feel about that. I have mixed feelings because I think the champion determines the championship. You know, the championship's prestige is all in the champion, and how that champion is portrayed, and how he defends it, and all those things. So I think whoever wins this matchup will do a great job at defending it and being a world champion. But getting into this one, we have Seth freaking Rollins taking on AJ Styles. I think this is a fantastic matchup for this championship. But they did square off to start our day over in Saudi Arabia. And this was a banger. I mean, this is a classic. This is one that people are going to refer back to when they talk about this championship. This is a fantastic matchup. I mean, everything that it was on paper is how it came to life. If you guys missed this one, you definitely got to go check it out for yourselves. Both guys have very sick gear on. Seth Rollins blue and cheetah print attire was sick as hell. We had some really creative stuff. The story of this matchup was pretty much Seth Rollins' knee. It kind of reminded me of like 2018 and even before that. You know, kind of battling a knee like he did a he did a move to the outside and he landed on his knee. And they kind of sold that throughout the matchup. And we had some great near falls, some great stuff. The crowd was over, obviously. Biting up all of this. Eating up this entire matchup. But this is just an instant classic. I mean, it, it's everything you want, man. Guys, back and forth. The only thing I really found weird about this matchup was the very end. You know, it took a lot to put AJ Styles away. It was like two pedigrees, a stomp. I don't know. It was just like, I guess the timing was a little bit odd, but it worked out. And I heard that Abyss actually got to choreograph this match or got to produce this matchup. And I thought he did a fantastic job. This was a great matchup. If you guys missed it, definitely go check it out. I think the right guy won. Seth Rollins being the guy commanding the championship and the lead here. I know he's supposed to be all filming in the MCU. And so I don't know where that exactly stands when it comes to being a champion and stuff like that. So I guess we'll see. Maybe they'll write him off for the knee. Like he's got to get checked out by the doctor and then he'll come back in a few weeks. I don't know. We'll see how that plays out. But this it was a fantastic match. It lived up to the hype. Seth Rollins is your new and first, I guess, quote unquote, world heavyweight champion, even though new design, but apparently it's the same lineage as the world title, the big gold. So we'll see. But I enjoyed this matchup. Thought it was fantastic. Go check it out. Next up was our Becky Lynch and Trish Stratus matchup. Now coming into this matchup, I wasn't that hyped on the feud itself and just the booking and kind of the build to it. But this matchup was great. I mean, what do you expect out of two of the best women's wrestlers of all time? Becky Lynch, absolutely fantastic as always. Love Loved her Kill Bill inspired gear. We need that Mattel form and I don't want it in some ugly plain ass basic man. We need that in elite or ultimate form. That Becky Lynch was super fire. Very damn good Kill Bill inspired gear there. That was sick as hell. Please Mattel take notes. But this matchup was actually very good. I actually enjoyed it. Not a perfectly just technical classic but it was still damn good. I enjoyed myself throughout the matchup and at the end of the matchup was really where the story took place and when Zoe Stark comes in and costs Becky Lynch helping Trish Stratus to win the matchup. So, kind of giving her a little bit of brownie points right there in the future. I think that's a nice little booking decision there. Didn't expect that, so that'll be cool to see. You know, where we go from here and all that, but I enjoyed this one. Trish Stratus gets the win by assist by Zoe. Next up is our Intercontinental Championship match between Gunther and Mustafa Ali. I knew this one on paper was going to be an absolute classic. I mean, you have two in-ring technicians. You have Walter, who is like literally incapable of having a bad football game. And then you have Mustafa Ali, who is one of the most underrated wrestlers possibly ever. And this one did not disappoint, man. Both guys look good. I loved Walter's or Gunther's Navy gear. I loved Mustafa Ali's red, bright gear. 
It was like shiny. These guys killed it, man. They tore the damn house down. It was a very enjoyable matchup. I mean, what else did you expect out of these guys? Lord in heaven. Another one that you definitely need to go back and check out. I mean, right now, Night of Champions is on fire. You've had some banger classics already. And this one is added to the list. This was a very enjoyable matchup, I thought. Mustafa Ali had some great moments here and there. He went for the 450. He connected with the 450 the first time, but he missed it on the second go-round. Shotgun drop kick by Walter, like, blew him into the corner. My God, he, like, killed him. It looked like he shot him with a real shotgun for real. Hit him with the power bomb and won the matchup. What a damn classic. What a great football game this was, man. Go back and check this one out, but Gunther retains the IC Championship, as he should, but it was a nice opportunity here for Ali, and he looked damn good in defeat. Next up was a Raw Women's Championship match between Bianca Belair and Asuka. Both ladies wore some pretty sweet gear in this one. I would love to see the Bianca Belair in an Elite, and I know we're gonna get a face paint Asuka from her look. You know it's coming. I, I bet we'll get her Royal Rumble look, but this matchup was pretty damn good as well, man. You know, you have two, again, two of the best ladies in the world, two of the best on the roster, no doubt. Asuka, love her to death. Bianca Belair, same deal. I mean, these two are super athletic. They go great in the ring. Great chemistry between these two. I think that the ending of this matchup was so creative, man. You guys know that we were coming in with the with the mist and everything with Asuka and could she get it off and all these different things and how is she going to get away with it. But what she did was very creative. While Bianca Belair was down in the corner, she spit the mist in her hand. She put the mist in her hand. And then she got loaded up by Bianca Belair and Asuka wiped it in her eyes with her hand, blinding her, giving her two kicks to the back of the skull for the one, two, three, and ending the Bianca Belair championship reign, which was honestly a long time coming. You know, her reign was kind of boring as dominant as it was. And so I'm thrilled to see Asuka win here. Thought it was a great win for her. I thought it was very creative. Super creative ending there. I wish that it was a little bit more clean. I felt like it was a little bit choppy. Execution definitely could have been better, but it was really fun. Fun ending there. I love shenanigans and wrestling, so that really popped me. But nonetheless, Asuka is your brand new Raw Women's Champion. And now we will see where this goes from here, but I enjoyed the matchup. Next up, guys, we have the SmackDown Women's Championship match Rhea Ripley squaring off with Natalia. Now, after Asuka won the matchup, I went to the kitchen to make me lunch and legitimately, in the middle of making lunch, I ran back or it was like like maybe a couple minutes, I like got everything out of the fridge and then I ran back to get something out of the office and Rhea Ripley's coming down the ramp with Dominic Mysterio doing her entrance. I go back to make the lunch and I'm like it's been a couple minutes passed by and then all of a sudden I hear, look at my eyes look at the door, run, or something like that. I hear that, faintly hear that in my ear, and I come back, and Rhea has already beaten the hell out of Natalia. So this clip's probably gonna be longer than the actual match itself. Rhea attacked her from behind and buried the hell out of her. And I heard that it was Natalia's birthday today, so she had to hop on a flight, fly across the world on her birthday to Saudi Arabia, her happy self out to the ring, and get decapitated by Rhea Ripley. My lord. Insane turn of events, but Rhea Ripley's still your champion, so that's good stuff. Next up was Brock Lesnar taking on Cody Rhodes, man. A matchup that, you know, I, I really wasn't looking forward to, man. Just the whole fallout of everything. If you guys know the story. I mean, I went to the Royal Rumble front row. I witnessed Cody Rhodes win the Royal Rumble in person. I witnessed him on the floor at WrestleMania trying to finish the story, and he came up short, got spiked in the back of the neck by Solo Sokoa. Coming up short there, really thought he should have finished the story there, and he didn't, and then he gets thrusted into this Brock Lesnar matchup and feud. And while I can appreciate a Brock Lesnar versus Cody matchup, and I can get into them in the ring, I just really wish he would have finished the story, man. Then you would have had the bloodline fallout with Roman and the Usos and Solo versus KO and Sammy. KO and Sammy beat the Usos and then if Roman lost to Cody then you could have had them headbutting each other saying why didn't you win and that whole fallout could have taken place up to SummerSlam but now it's all just convoluted mess. Nonetheless, Brock Lesnar beat the hell out of Cody. He has a broken arm so he comes out in this matchup and I know we're going to get this in figure form whether it's a basic and elite. We're going to get a, a casted arm Cody. I could see it. A little white paint with black paint over it. I could already see it bro. It's going to be a basic or an elite. Probably a basic if I had to guess, but anything's possible, but this matchup was okay for what it was, but it got ridiculous real quick. Cody was getting chased by Brock all over the arena, or all around the ring, and then Cody started, like, bashing him in the head with the cast, or the arm sling, or whatever the hell you want to call it. It was like a cast slash brace slash whatever the hell sling, and he's just bashing him in the head. He started, like, bleeding. Brock had, like, some cuts on him from the cast. It's not really a cast. It's more of, like, a brace that you would buy from, like, Walgreens, one of those big ones that goes up to your elbow, almost. But he's bashing him in the head, and then Brock Lesnar locks in a Kimura lock, which, so many ways you could look at this. First of all, if he was wearing a cast, I feel like you probably couldn't, like, break your arm anymore unless you literally broke the cast, which would have been a very sick visual. 
If they would have just made a, a, an impromptu cast for the match and then had Brock break it in half, that would have been really sick to, like, really break his arm again. That would have been sick as hell. But I feel like your arm would be torqued because it would be stuck in the cast and you would, like, break your shoulder. But Cody Rhodes is over there, like, passing out. And I, what? From the pain? Like, I don't, I don't know. I thought that was so funny. They turned this man into the Fiend 2.0 or, like, freaking Iron Man over here. Nonetheless, it was an enjoyable matchup. It's just, like, completely ridiculous at points. But I was a fan of it. Brock Lesnar did win here as he should. I I don't know where we go from here. I'm really lost on this. I guess we will have to just wait and see how things go. See how they play out, which I'm, you know, sometimes that gets old, but this was fun for what it was, but it got ridiculous. In our main event, we had the undisputed tag team championship match between Roman Reigns and Solo Sokoa taking on Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn. You guys know the long yeared storyline that we have brewing here. It went all the way to the Royal Rumble, all the way to WrestleMania. And now here we are in Saudi, Night of Champions, the bloodline, the cracks have been showing, and now we get this tag team championship match. Is Roman Reigns going to capture all four championships? This matchup was amazing, and much like the rest of the matchups that we've seen throughout this entire year-long storyline between these groups and these guys and these teams. Everybody individually, this has been beautiful and so was this match. This match was beautiful. It was well booked. It was well done. I thought all four men got their stuff in. Had some back and forth between them. It all boiled up to the ending where we had some shenanigans. There was a ref bump. He took a spear and then the Usos came out to interfere, take out Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn. Well, Usos accidentally super kick Solo Sokoa and take him out and then Roman Reigns gets in the ring and he's like, get the hell out of my ring. And he shoves Jay and then Jimmy's like, what the hell and super kicks Roman and then Jay's like Jimmy what the hell are you doing Oos what the hell are you doing and then Jimmy says I'm doing what you should have done a long time ago I'd never treat you like that bro bam super kick again so Roman Reigns is laid out the Usos flee the scene Solo Sokoa gets Haluva kicked stunnered and one two three Solo Sokoa eats the pin and Roman and Solo fall and it appears the bloodline is crumbling from within and we're finally going to see this downward spiral I'm guessing so I don't know where Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn fit in here. I feel like you gotta find them new challengers because it looks like to me it's gonna be a Solo and Roman versus Usos type show. And I don't know if that's gonna be Jimmy or Jay or a tag team match or a handicap match or what we're gonna get there, but I don't know. I, I really don't know what we're gonna boil to here, but this is very intriguing. We're gonna get the next step of the storyline and I'm, I'm ready, man. I think this is gonna be absolutely beautiful. But Night of Champions was pretty damn good, man. I thought it was an overall really good show. I enjoyed a lot of it, a big bulk of it. I did enjoy. I thought that a lot of the things were done well. I had a lot of fun with it. It was, it was pretty fast. Like, it felt like it breezed by because the, the TV and the wrestling was so good, in my opinion. But that was your entire Night of Champions, man. I enjoyed the show. I thought overall it was good. I think you need to go back and check this show out if you guys missed it. I think there's enough here on the bone for you to go check it out. However, that wraps up my Night of Champions review, man. Before we get out of here, though, we do have to give a huge shout-out to the Patreon Army. Me, the MDT Patreon. If you guys are interested in becoming patrons of the MDT YouTube channel, go check it out. Link in the description below. Also, while this pay-per-view was going on, AEW Double or Nothing Fan Fest was taking place, and I was looking at all the figures and dissecting all of that constantly being on social media to re react to the show, to react to the fan fest and the figures we got. And so I don't know if my coverage will be up later today or if it will go up in the morning. And then we have Double or Nothing tomorrow night, which I also plan on reviewing. So we have a lot of stuff to cover, a lot of stuff to get through, but it will be worth it, man. Hope you guys did enjoy. But I'm getting the hell out of here, man. Thank you guys so very much for watching. Hope you guys did enjoy. Leave me your thoughts on this show down in the comment section below. I'm getting out of here. Follow me on Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok at MyDamnToys. Subscribe to the channel. I'll see you guys next time. Have a blessed one, and I'll see you in the next one. Never